you can now uh, look at. This is an, an applet, and there is a huge set of example applets available from the Sun website. And uh, so there is a, is a class, this is a, a purse applet, a prepaid card applet, and it extends applet, which is defined in the Java card framework. And it has, and the main thing it does is handle incoming commands. And commands are APDU call, and so we see here the method process APDU, which is the main method that will handle anything that the environment of the card throws at the, the card. And there is a conditional here which says, if you have a special format, the standard format, do something different. But in this case, if you want to have a special command, initialize transaction, and you do initialize transaction. So you will have a huge case statement here to test whatever is coming. This is not object-oriented programming, but it is programming of cards using Java. There have been attempts to make it better and more object-oriented, but the market never really liked it, so I was sitting there at Sun and tried to convince them to be more pure, but that didn't work out. Uh, anyway, this is the basic of writing an applet for Java card. You just fill in the process method, define your commands, and in all those methods, where is the, all those, you define all kinds of methods, we take APDUs and do whatever you need to do, and create a response and send it out to the world to work with. I don't know where we got there. Somehow, I got to the end. Oh. Good. Back. So, this was the end of Java. If there are any questions, you can raise your hand now, and, and uh, I will try to explain better. Otherwise, we can wait to the end. Um, now you have a Java card. You build some program in it. Um, what can you, how does it go about to actually make use of that card? You have to communicate with the card, and the first thing you have to do is to get power to the card. It will tell you something. You can send exchange messages, um, and you have to understand how the messages look like. And then you have to know what application there is, so you have to find your application first. The first thing a card does is send out an answer to reset. It's called ATR in the lingo of smart cards. Uh, it defines communication protocols, like the bit rate and some other uh, things, it, it timeouts and other. Um, it also specifies the protocol to use, the, the, the low-level packet protocol. There are three proto two protocols defined, and many attempts to define better protocols. T equals zero has been defined in the late 80s. It was a protocol that could be implemented on even smaller processes than I just mentioned. Uh, T equals one was an attempt to do it by the Germans, by the way to do a much more rigorous OSI-compliant uh, version of the protocol. Uh, most cards now support both protocols, but all cards always support, support the T equals zero protocol for the first few bytes they send out, and you can then negotiate with the pro protocol exchange protocol, um, the protocol you want. T equals 14 is the protocol that you want to do if you are hacking the card, because you can define anything you want. It means after you have specified T14, your card can switch to whatever protocol it likes, and you are on your own, and you, don't need, you can ignore any standards and do whatever you like. The speed possible with cards used to be about 256 kilobit. Nowadays, <coughs> you can go up to two megabit in T0 or T1 protocols. So that's, not, that's pretty fast for the cards. Most terminals on the other hand are either 9K6 or a bit faster. So if you, have, if you buy a reader on the market, the speeds of the card are most usually limited by what the reader will offer, which is usually very moderate. The ATR also has some other data. It has uh, 32 bytes possible at maximum to tell about what is in the card. There's no standard for it. Some manufacturers put the name in there, put the version of the product, uh, the size of the ROM or whatever. There's no prediction of what it is. There is some use of it in some software in the terminal, but it's not predictably to work. So. There's no way to find out. The protocol that you use after you have, after the card is powered up, is called APDU protocol for application protocol data unit. It's, uh, it's defined in a standard. It's defined uh, in the early 90s. It's been reworked in the 2005 edition of the standard. 
it's half duplex. The card lift, waits, it gets a command, processes it, and sends out a response, and waits for another command. The main thing is it just has a simple header. The first two bytes specify whether it's compliant to the standard, and if it is compliant, then the second byte actually tells you what kind of instruction it is giving. The other two bytes are parameters. Then you have a payload, and the payload can be, used to be 256 bytes maximum. Nowadays, some cars support the longer version, which is up to 65K. Of course, most cars don't have the memory to support 65K messages, so they have a way of indicating that they can accept uh, 4K, 8K bytes of uh, memory, depending on how much RAM they have and what they want to do with it. <coughs> if you, you not understand, if the first bit of the message you send is a one, you basically can do what you want. You're still bound to the T equals zero or T equals one protocol for the actual packet format, but how you interpret the, the rest of the byte is up to you. So if you specify T equals 14, and then you're on your own. If you specify T equals one or T equals zero, and you can still use whatever command format you like if you use the non-standard formats. In Java, since you can program what you want, there actually is a copy made of some of the standard facilities, which is the, the logical channels. If you use a standard command, you can specify 20 different possibilities, 20 simultaneous applications that can be active in the card. You can specify a logical channel. You can open and close those channels, and they are like virtual connections or pores on the, on the IP connection. Very primitive, but it works. And most cards now base support at least four or always the full 20 uh, logical channels. Java card supports logical channels also when you have proprietary commands, the non-standard ones, when you have the first bit set to one. You can actually, in one range of bytes, you can actually indicate the logical channel. So you have a logical channel that's compatible with commands on the, non -sta the standard ones and the non-standard ones. If you are, the, if the card is one side, there is a reader involved, it's contacts, it makes contact to the contacts and links to the USB port or the serial port of your uh, uh, host station, your uh, terminal. Um, PCSC is the common standard for use for that. It's a layered architecture which allows manufacturers to, of readers to plug in some plugin that talks to their reader. Some readers have a display or buttons and then you can use those buttons and displays if you use, the, use their plugin. There's another layer which looks at the ATR and tries to determine what the card can do and brings the functionality of the card in that way. But most cards have mean, meaningless uh, ATR, so there is a transparent plugin which basically gives you the APDUs on a, uh, uh, on a named socket, and you can talk APDUs to your card when you open that uh, PCSC uh, daemon. And all operating systems, lin Linux, uh, most Linuxes have them, Mac OS has it. It's all based on the, the open source version of PCSC, which is the Muscle Card project, with, and the PCSC there is called PCSC Lite. The PCSC consortium itself started way ago by uh, Schlumberger and uh, Microsoft trying to bring cards to the Windows system, which really didn't work out that well, but other systems took it up and uh, now we're here. There is an, a Java version of the framework, the same age, started also in 95, um, being put into uh, Java, it failed to be the, the only framework, and now it is, sits on top of PCSC. So if you write a program, program your, your things in Java, in the card and in the terminal, open card framework is still available. There are some alternatives. There's an attempt then to make a remote method invocation available on cards. Uh, it's a facility which uh, exists, but it's very 